afternoon everyone and welcome back to our channel those of you who have been with us from the beginning know that we try to follow a pretty similar format every time short video seven to ten minutes so you don't get tired of listening to me a few questions at the end of each video on areas that we know from 40 years industry experience students always have difficulty with on their licensing exam we're going to do the same thing today but before we start we want to take a couple of minutes to introduce some upcoming things we have for you we have a blog and podcast we're thinking to entitle the blog and the podcast what the hell is wrong with the hair care industry and if you hate that title and you have a better one send us a comment the things we want to talk about are what the hell is wrong with the school owners what the hell is wrong with the school directors what the hell is wrong with the school instructors what the hell is wrong with the school customers and finally the painful one what the hell is wrong with the school students because there's plenty of blame to go around and then after you get your license, and if you read our book, this one happens to be barbering in English. We have it, cosmetology, barbering, skin care, and nails in both English and Spanish. After you watch our videos and you read our books, you will pass your test. Then you've got the even bigger challenge of your career. Where are you planning on working? And this makes a big, big difference in your ultimate career success. According to the national survey, Five years after getting a license, only one in 20 people is actually working in this industry for a job. That means 19 out of 20 people are doing something else. The reason that 19 out of 20 people are not working in this industry after spending a year in school and thousands of dollars on tuition is because A, you weren't taught all the things you're going to need to know to do people's hair. And B, probably even more importantly, you weren't given any suggestions or instructions on where to work, where not to work. And we're gonna talk about these things on our blog and our podcast. The pros and cons of working for a chain like Great Clips, the pros and cons of renting a station. There's a lot of things to know because there's a lot of problems with salon and barbershop owners. A lot of problems with salon and barbershop customers. And again, plenty of problems with salon and barbershop employees coming podcast and blog comments. Now, the reason I say all this is I'm asking you to send us your comments on topics you'd like us to discuss on these platforms. Send them to me. My name is Michael. Just easy. Michael at cosmetologystateboardexam.com. That's Michael at cosmetologystateboardexam.com. We will respond to your questions and put them in our file we're building of things to talk about. Okay, enough about that. We're going to move right on to something that is extremely important. We've been getting a lot of calls about it recently. Most of you will just decide to swipe right because I don't care about that. I'm never going to do that. Well, you know, if you could know what you were going to do in the future, you would pick the lottery numbers and you would be rich. If somebody would have told me when I was 20 what I would be doing today, I would have never believed it. So you don't really know. You know what you think you're going to do or not do, but you don't really know. One of the things, whether you decide to do hair color or not, and I know the barber's right now leaving us because I'm never doing hair color, and you may never do hair color. I always vowed when I was in school I would never do a manicure or a pedicure, and I never have in 42 years. But I knew the questions on the state board exam about manicures and pedicures, and that's all I'm trying to help you with. I'm not telling you what you should do after you get your license. I'm telling you how to get your license. And unless you understand what I'm going to talk about for the rest of this video, you will not be getting your license. Okay? Number one. I hope the, the slide will pop up right now. Okay, it says, question, what is the complementary color of red? And before we continue, this is in your Barber book on page 645 and 646. It's in your cosmetology book, see, Barber book. It's in your cosmetology book on page 677, which right there is an interesting concept. It's talked about more in the Barber book than the cosmetology book. That should clue you into it'll be more in the Barber test than the cosmetology test. Finally, in the esthetician book, it's on page 561 and 620. What is the complementary color of red? Your choices are blue, green, orange, and yellow. In your book, as it says on page 677 and 678, and 645 and 646, it tells you the opposite or complementary color of red is green. 
Just think about Christmas, red and green. Okay, here comes slide number two. What color will neutralize red? Again, you've got the options, blue, green, yellow, or orange. And the answer, once again, is green. Green will neutralize red. Moving along to slide number three, hopefully, we see the question, what color will cancel red? And once again, your choice is blue, green, yellow, and orange. And as you might have guessed by this point, the color that will cancel red is green. So we now know that the complementary color of red is green. Green will neutralize red, and green will cancel red. Three possible state board test questions. Number four. What color is positioned directly opposite red on the color wheel? Blue, green, yellow, or orange? And the answer is once again, B, green. Green is positioned directly opposite red on the color wheel. Moving on to slide number five. What color is positioned 180 degrees across the color wheel from red? Blue, green, yellow, or orange? And the answer is, again, green. So we know from these two slides, the color wheel is a circle. A circle is 360 degrees. Half of that would be 180 degrees. So if the question says, what color is directly opposite red on the color wheel? The answer is green. But directly opposite red is also 180 degrees. And it's a half circle. The answer is once again green. So it's really the same question. So far, they've asked you the same question five times, just worded five different ways. And this is one of the problems. Even the students that pay attention will memorize the complementary color of red is green. But they can't answer the other four variations. And this is what the state does. They cannot make up new facts. There's, you know, if I drop this pen, it falls. If it goes up, you should run, okay? Certain things are just facts. All they can do on your state board exam, and they do this very well, is think of new ways to word the same old questions. If they didn't, if every single day, after year after year after year, if the test were the same exact questions, everyone would be passing because by now, the teachers would know exactly the 100 questions on your test. On day one, they'd hand you a list that said, here's your 100 questions and answers, memorize them, and I'll see you at the end of the year. And everyone would pass their test. But we know it's not true. We know the pass rate for cosmetologists nationally is around 55% on the first take. For barbers, it's about 47% on the first take. Estheticians, about 75%. For reasons I'm not wasting my time going into right now, okay? Barbers and cosmetologists, the pass rate on the first time taking it is not good. And this is why. This is why we go over these things over and over and over again. So you understand all the ways they could ask you the same thing. Let's take a look at video. Oh, before we go on, okay, six questions on the opposite of red, which we know is green. Now imagine that they do the same thing with the complementary color of blue and the same complementary color of yellow. Suddenly you've got 18 possible questions. And if you read your book closely, every one of these is in your book. They didn't make any of this up out of, out of the air. Everything I just said is in your book for those who read it closely. Now, Talking about reading a book closely. See this? This is what a closely read book looks like. There's little sticky tabs marking important pages. When you open them, there's things highlighted in red and things highlighted in black and things underlined. Here's what a well-read cosmetology book looks like. And here's what a well-read barber book looks like. I've been doing this for a long time. That's why my books are a mess like that because I know what's on the test. I know what I need to teach my students. I'm taking a class right now in construction, interestingly enough, to get my general contractor license. The teacher made the same point the other day. It's $1,000 for six classes. He made the same observation this past Sunday. Yeah, the classes on Saturdays and Sundays when I should be having a vacation from my job, I'm sitting in school for eight hours a day. The instructor made the same point I just made. He held up a book. He said, you see this book? This is what a book looks like for a student to pass at their test. He held up another book with no tags. He said, this is what one looks like for a student that doesn't pass their test. Okay, enough lecturing, right? A couple of more variations on this same topic. Let's move on to video 6.5. The question, 
more directed at estheticians than anybody else, but th the logic doesn't really change. They could easily reword this question for Cosmos and Barbers. You are working as a makeup artist in a five-star hotel in Hawaii. A woman is sitting in your chair crying. She is getting married in less than an hour and she has a bright red sunburn. What color foundation would you apply to conceal the sunburn? Answer A, apply a blue foundation. Answer B, apply a green foundation. Answer C, apply a yellow foundation. And answer D, apply an orange foundation. Once again, what color will cancel or neutralize? What color is opposite red? The answer is again, green. You would apply a green foundation to her red sunburn and suddenly she will not have a sunburn in her photographs. She'll still be in pain, but that's on her. Your job is to make her look nice on her picture. Moving on to slide number seven. Question, an even mixture of blue and yellow will produce what color? An even mixture of blue and yellow will produce what color? A, blue, B, green, C, yellow, D, orange. If you mix blue and yellow together, you're going to get green. Because in a very real sense, very dark yellow is green. And this is easily observed if you look at a mustard jar in your refrigerator. Most of you probably have one. If you look at the dried mustard around the top, it's old and it's oxidized with air. It's a kind of a greenish color. Very, very, very dark yellow is green. Very, very, very light yellow green is, um, very, very light green is yellow, right? You mix blue and yellow and you get green. Number eight. If you are out of, if you put blue toner on hair highlighted to a pale yellow, you put bleach on the person's hair, highlights, the state board likes the term decolorizer. Most people call it bleach. You've decolorized your client's hair to a pale yellow. She doesn't like the pale yellow. She says it looks like Goldilocks. She wants Marilyn Monroe, platinum blonde. You put a blue toner on her yellow hair. What do you get? What did the prior slide tell you? You mix blue and yellow, you get green. So when you put a blue toner on your client's hair and her hair goes from yellow to green, she's not gonna be happy. And if you think she was unhappy with yellow, wait till her hair is green. This goes all the way back to an earlier slide about what is the complementary color of yellow? And the answer is not blue. The answer is violet. Violet will cancel yellow, blue will cancel orange. This is all in your book. And you know where else it is? It's on your test. Now I've just showed you 21 possible test questions. Every one of which has been on a test in the not too distant past. Now, you won't have 21 questions on this on your test, but I promise you, you will have two or three. And if you don't understand this, you will not pass this section. Now, I can wrap all this lecture up with a couple of simple observations. No matter what state you live in, the most heavily tested chapter on your test is going to be infection control. If you're a barber, that is chapter four. If you're a cosmetologist or an esthetician, it is chapter five. It will be in every state, even yours, one third of the test questions. You cannot pass the test if you bomb on one third of the questions. The second most heavily tested chapter, and this goes out to California barbers alone, the second most heavily tested area for California barbers is shaving. There will be 20 questions. Again, you cannot pass your test if you miss 20 questions on shaving. Every other state for barbers, there's two, three, or five questions. So you could actually miss every question and still pass your test. I don't recommend it, but you could do it. For everybody else, including barbers in the other 49 states and all cosmetologists and all estheticians, the second most heavily tested is chemical services. And for California barbers, chemical services is the third most heavily tested. Chemical services comprised of three things, permanent waving, chemical relaxers, and called curl reformations, which is simply to make the hair less curly. Now, you have to understand this. And of the three things in chemical services, the most heavily tested is hair color and hair color theory, which is why I've just spent the last 10 minutes going over 21 possible hair theory, hair color questions. You absolutely must understand complementary colors as discussed in your book. 
that's going to pretty much wrap it up for today. Right? Make sure you drop us your comments on this video, what you think about what we talked about. We appreciate your comments. It helps us in the future. Subscribe to our channel. Send us an email at michael at cosmetologystateboardexam.com. After you subscribe, we'll send you your free list of vocabulary, quest, vocabulary terms you'll need to know for the test. And again, please email us your comments, what we talked about, what the hell is wrong with the hair industry. We'll put them on our blog, we'll put them on our podcast. And if you want to speak to us in person, give us a call, 760-534-4434. We can speak to you in both Spanish and English. Visit our website, www.cosmetologystateboardexam.com, and hope to see you on our next video.